All right, so this might be a little bit of a hot take here, but using LUTs is still going to be the fastest way to color grade your footage. And, and before you guys get crazy in the comments, just know that LUTs aren't necessarily a one click saves all in terms of your color grading. There still needs to be a bit of a workflow. And a lot of you guys are transitioning from Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro into DaVinci Resolve. So today we're gonna go over seven tips to actually use your LUT color grading workflows fast. Now every good grade is going to start off with a good setup and you want to make sure that you're setting up your project that's optimized for your color grading workflow. Now typically for me what I use, I use DaVinci Wide Gamut as my input color space which you can find in the settings menu. The reason why you want to do that is because it's a big and wide space that works with a variety of colors and you get a lot of flexibility and leeway in terms of the footage that you're working with. Now in terms of a gamma that I'm using, I'm going to use Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 because most of our things like our computer, our phones, and our television use a Rec. 709 space and you want to make sure that your colors are accurate from your computer into the final deliverable wherever somebody's watching it. And the Gamma 2.4 is mostly because I edit in a darker area. So if you are in a lighter area, you can use something like 2.2, but I use 2.4 and to be honest, that's just for the lighting of the room. Now second is actually making room for your color grading. Now the node system might be a little bit new if you're coming from other programs. You're gonna use Alt Option S in order to make something called a serial node. Now think of serial nodes kind of like adjustment layers where each different node is going to have a different effect that's gonna affect your overall grade. Now keep in mind that serial nodes are also going to work in a sequential order. So number one is going to impact number two, so on and so forth. And that means that you want to put the most important things that you're going to edit in your image first and then put some of the finishings near the end. Now when setting up your node tree, you could actually label these so you don't forget which effect is which. Now some of the staple nodes that I use is going to be my exposure, my contrast, saturation, and even things like dialing in my skin tones. Now because I'm going in the order of importance, I actually do my exposure and my noise reduction that goes on first. And in the end of my node tree, I keep things like certain colors I want to change or or even dialing in my skin tones. All right, so now saying that, this might sound a little bit confusing, but you wanna start with the end in mind. Now, when I talk about that is that you wanna actually move those LUTs from your favorite creator, or if you wanna get mine, link in the description down below, you wanna actually put some of those LUTs at the end of your final grade. And you wanna actually work under the hood while using the serial nodes in front of it. Now, a simple way of explaining this is that if you're using a node tree, your LUT is going to be the last node that's on there. However, you are gonna go backward into previous nodes to make those adjustments. Now, oftentimes there's two types of LUTs. One are the more creative type of LUTs that you just put on Rec. 709 converted footage, and some actually have that conversion inside of it. But regardless, those are gonna be closer to the end of your serial node tree while you're grading in order for you to do something called working under the hood. That means that you're gonna have a lot more flexibility in terms of your exposure, your contrast, and other things that you might want to adjust underneath the actual LUT itself. But at the end of the day, when you finish your grade, you want everything to culminate in the LUT that it's designed for because it might be the most accurate for whatever you're viewing your final footage on. Now, speaking of LUTs, when you pick up a LUT from your favorite creator, sometimes they were made on one camera system that you might not have. For example, I use S-Log3 to actually make my LUT pack, and some people that might shoot Canon or Fuji or some other system might not actually know exactly what they want to do, but they still want that look. And that's where something called the Color Space Transform comes in. Now, Color Space Transform is a feature on DaVinci Resolve where you could actually take the color space of the camera that you're in and transform it into something else. For example, if you're someone that shot on Canon Log2 on your Canon camera, but you want to use a Sony LUT, you could actually use a color space transform to transform your Canon log into the Sony log instead. Now going back to the LUTs in that conversation while editing on DaVinci Resolve, this is where you could use color space transform to your advantage. Now if you have something called a creative LUT where it doesn't do a Rec. 709 conversion, you could just transition your current footage into Rec. 709 and put the LUT on top of that for the accuracy of having the colors represented. You could use your color space transform to find your color gamma and your color space and just convert it to Rec. 709 where you could put the LUT on top. Now, if that doesn't work for you and you already have a LUT with a Rec. 709 conversion, then you could just put that LUT at the end of your node tree and you could use a color space transform to adjust in case it's a different system. So while using an S-Log3 LUT, as long as I put a color space transform to transform whatever log I'm using into S-Log, I'm gonna still be able to get a lot of that look and a little bit more accurate and colors don't look off. Now, what I will say is that the color space transform isn't necessarily an AI robot yet and it can't completely change over your color system from one over to the other. It's gonna simulate it the best that it possibly can. So this means for you guys that are shooting in 8-bit but you wanna have an RE color science, it doesn't really work that way. It tries to emulate the color space in the gamma as best as it can, but the limitations of the camera that you're using may dictate how close it actually gets to there. Now DaVinci Resolve doesn't just have really powerful coloring tools, but it also has really powerful effects. Adding things like film grain or different types of dust effects or halation and glow are different effects that you can get out of the color tab while using Resolve. 
12. Now this is up to personal preference and this is just for me, but I actually put some of those effects after the actual grading. So everything that goes in the nodes before my LUT or my color space transform are gonna be the ways that I adjust my exposure or my color. However, if I'm gonna add effects like glow or grain or halation, I'm actually gonna put that on the other side of the LUT, some of the finishing effects that are gonna go after. This is personal preference just for myself, but if you wanna copy that type of workflow, I found to not give it too many problems. Now the flexibility and the power that DaVinci Resolve has, you could do a lot in terms of color grading. However, if it's not broke, don't try to fix it. Sometimes things look really good with only adjusting a couple of nodes or only adding a couple of different effects into your grade. And as creators, we feel like we have to tinker with everything, which actually makes things a little bit worse than it does actually making it better. So if your color grades are starting to look good, but you wanna keep adding extra things just to make it look that much better, just know that sometimes less is actually more and being a little bit subtle is actually going to help you overall with your image. And lastly, when everything's said and done and everything looks perfect, you probably wanna save your work. And this is where you could use something called power bins. Now maybe you're editing a project and the color is actually looking really good and you have your workflow dialed in and you don't wanna to have to repeat it going from project to project. Power bins are really cool because you could transition your entire workflow, not just the LUTs, from one project into another. Now this is really easy because all you have to do is right click on your image and grab a still. Now it's gonna be in the gallery section of your color tab and you're gonna see different folders that might be there already with different screenshots that have your color grade saved onto them. Now you don't wanna just stop there you want to go to the bottom and actually create something called a new power bin. You can give it whatever name you want and all you have to do is drag and drop some of those screen grabs into that power bin. Now what ends up happening is when you open up a new project, you could actually drag over all of that color grading workflow, all the adjustments you made into the new project. That means anything from the LUTs that you use, how you adjusted the exposure, how you did your contrast, your saturation, even your skin tone workflows, you could move from one project into another one. Now whenever you're working on any type of project, you could copy your workflow and make it consistent between any Anything that you're working on from commercials to short films or documentaries. That being said, those are seven tips that you can color grade your footage a lot faster. Now, a lot of you guys are transitioning from Final Cut or other programs into DaVinci Resolve, and the color grading system might be a little bit intimidating. There are a bunch of other videos that I've left on this channel to actually help you dial in those settings while using this program. So you guys can go and check those out. But that being said, I hope you liked the video, or at the very least, you learned something, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.